in this, uh, this is your module two, part A test corrections for algebra. You have to watch the video on Google Classroom and copy all the work for each question in order to receive credit for doing the corrections. First, make sure your name is on it. Question one says, which table represents y as a function of x? Remember, for functions, we do not repeat the x's. We do not repeat our x values. So we just need to look at our x values and see if I have any repeating x values. So in this first table, I have repeating negative fives. In the second table, I have uh, I have 6, negative 6, 8, negative 8. So all of those are not repeated. In the third table, I have negative 3, negative 3. And then in the last table, all of these are being repeated. So the answer would be the second table right here where all of my x's are different values. Number two. A weightlifter is adding plates of equal weight to a bar. The table below shows the weight, including the bar, that the that he will lift depending on the total number of plates on the bar. Based on this information, which statement is true? So we have a table. It's our x and our y. We can go ahead and plug that table into our calculator and find our m and our b. All right, so I plug that information into my calculator. My M is 35. And my B is 45. So what does that mean in this story? Well, the 35 means it'd be 35 pounds per plate. And the B, the 45, represents 45 pounds without plates. So without plates, zero plates, it'll be 45 pounds. That's just the uh, bar. So if we look at our answer choices, the bar weighs 25 pounds without any plates. Nope. Next one, the bar weighs 45 pounds without any plates. Well, that's what we said, but let's just keep looking. The bar weighs 70 pounds without any plates. Nope. And last but not least, the bar weighs 35 pounds without any plates. No, that would be my slope. So my answer is 45 pounds without any weights. Question three. The table of values shows a linear relationship between X and Y. What is the slope of the line represented by the table of values. So I can do change of y over change in x, or I could plug the equation or the table into my calculator and find my m and my b. So If I were to plug that in my calculator, it shows me my m is negative 1.6 and my b is negative 2.2. If I'm talking about the slope of the line, I'm talking about my m, so it equals negative 1.6. Now, all of these answer choices are in fraction form, so I can go and convert that to a fraction if I would like to. So menu 2, 2 and I get negative 8 over 5. So that's my answer right there. Number four. 
A function is shown, f of x equals 7 minus 4x. What is the value of f of negative 5? So this right here, f of negative 5. Negative 5 is what I'm going to plug in for x. I'm going to substitute x for negative 5. So f of negative 5 is equal to 7 minus 4 times negative 5. Well, I'm going to use my order of operations. So I have negative 4 times negative 5, which is going to be positive 20. So I have 7 plus 20, which equals 27. Number 5, which equation best represents the line shown on the grid? Well, it's a horizontal line. That means it's going to be y equals, so I can get rid of anything that says x equals. And it's going to be y equals whatever the y-intercept is. And in this case, the y-intercept is negative 6. So that is my answer. y equals negative 6. Number six, this is what is the equation in slope intercept form of a line that passes through the point 2, negative 2 and is perpendicular to the line represented by y equals 2 fifths x plus 2. So perpendicular, that means my slope is going to have opposite reciprocal slopes. So if my slope in this equation is two-fifths. That means it's going to become negative and my fraction is going to flip. My denominators are going to become my numerator. My numerator becomes my denominator. So I have five over two. So I have my slope and I have a point. So now I'm going to use point slope form. So I have y minus. My y value is negative two. So it's actually going to be y plus two equals my slope is negative 5 over 2 and then inside my parentheses I have x and I'm going to subtract my x my x is positive 2 so it's x minus 2 that is point slope form and now I need to make it into slope intercept form so the first thing we do is we distribute so I have y plus 2 equals negative 5 halves x plus five because negative five halves times negative two is five then i would subtract two from both sides so y equals negative five halves x plus three Here we go. Choose the correct answer for each row. The graph of a linear function, g, passes through the points negative 2, 2, and 4, 5. Complete the selections below. So I would probably plug in this information to a table to find my slope and my y-intercept. So I have negative 2, and I have four, five, menu, four, one, three. All right, so my M is 0 0.5 and my B is three, so my equation will be Y equals 0 0.5 X plus three. Well, here we go. So I know my y-intercept right here is 3 because my b is my y-intercept. So 3 right here, that's my y-intercept. 
Now, what I don't know is my x-intercept. So this 0 0.5 right here, this represents my slope. So two ways I can do this. I can plug in into a graph. I can plug in this equation right here. So 0 0.5 x plus 3. And graph it. And I can... find my zero. So lower bound, I go to the left of the zero. Upper bound, I go here. Negative six zero is my x-intercept. So negative six is my x. The other way I can do it is I can plug in zero for my y value and solve for x that way. And I'll get the same answer. Number eight, this is a drag and drop question. We were talking, uh, here's my question. A part of linear function G is graphed on the grid. Create an inequality that best describes the range of the part shown. So range, they're talking about the Y values. So my smallest Y value is at negative two. So I know g of x has to be greater than negative 2, but it also has to be less than positive 6. Number 9. An airplane's altitude in feet during its descent for landing can be found using the function f of x equals negative 300x plus 30,000, where x represents the horizontal distance in miles from where the plane begins its descent. After new government regulations become law, the descent will be modeled by the function g of x equals negative 300x plus 30,500, which statement describes the change. So f of x was negative 300x plus 30,000. G of x is negative 300x plus 30,500. So what's different between these equations? It's not the slopes, so the rate that they are descending. What changed was where they started their descension from. So. It says the airplane descends 500 feet per horizontal mile faster. Per means they're talking about slope. Well, that didn't change. The airplane descends 500 feet per horizontal mile slower. Again, that didn't change. The airplane starts its descent from an altitude 500 feet lower. Well, did they start 500 feet lower or did they start 500 feet higher? The airplane starts its descent from an altitude of 500 feet higher. Well, it was at 30,000, now it's at 30,500, so it starts at a higher altitude. Question 10. The table shows the linear relationship between the distance in feet below sea level and the time in seconds traveled by a submarine. What is the rate of change of the distance and feet below sea level with respect to time of the submarine traveled. If we're talking about rate of change, we're talking about our slope. We're talking about our M. So I can plug this table into my calculator to figure out my slope. My M is 8. Question 11. It says, a hot air balloon is approximately 6 feet above the ground. 
the hot air balloon is rising at an average rate of 1.5 feet per minute. Which equation can be used to find the height of the hot air balloon? Well, it says per minute here. That means the 1.5 is my slope and I'm rising. So my M is positive 1.5 and my B is six feet above the ground. So my function would be F of X equals 1.5 X plus six. All right, this is the graph of a linear function. F passes through the point one, negative nine, and has a slope of negative three. So two ways I can do this, I could plot it and plot the point and then use the slope to figure out where my y, where my x-intercept is because it's asking for the zero. That means my x-intercept. Okay, so if I'm at one, negative nine is down here and I have a slope of three, so I go up three or negative three. So I would go up three into the left one. So one, two, three, over one. One, two, three, over one. One, two, three, over one. So it would be at negative two, zero. So my zero is negative two. Number 13, the graph of a linear function is shown on the grid. Which equation best represented by the graph? So if we look at all of our answer choices, these are all in point-slope form. So point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So this m right here is my slope. Well, just looking at my line, I notice that it is a negative slope. So I'm going to get rid of anything that does not have a negative slope, just by doing that. So I can get rid of these two right here, because those say my slope is positive. So now all I need to worry about is what point are they using to plug in here into the equation. So right here I have the point negative two, negative one, and then the second one has a point of four, negative seven. So I'm gonna look on the graph. If one of those points is on there, that's the equation they used. So negative two, negative one, that point's not on my graph. But if I go to four, negative seven, that point is on my graph. So that is my answer. Question number 14, the graph of a line passes through the points negative three, one and five, eight. What is the slope of the line? Well, I could plot it. Or I could make a table. And I could use my calculator to find my M. So my M equals 0 0.875. It's positive, so I can get rid of anything that's negative. And the fraction equivalent is 7 eighths. The graph of a linear function is shown on the grid. What is the rate of change of y with respect to x for this function. All they're asking for is rate of change, which means that they're asking for the slope or the m. So I could use the two points they gave me and I could do rise over run. If you struggle with that, you could put those two points in your calculator and make a table. So let's say I count these. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's my rise. And my run is 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So negative six over eight, because it's a negative slope. I get negative three fourths. Question 16, the table represents some points on a graph of a linear function. Which function represents the same relationship? So all of these are in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm just going to plug that into my into my table. My m is negative 3, my b is negative 10.5, so I get y, or they're using function notation, so they said it, h of x equals negative 3x minus 10.5, so it would be that first answer choice right there. Number 17 says, which graph best represents a function with a domain of all real numbers less than or equal to 6? So we're talking about domain. So we're talking about x values. Our x values have to be less than or equal to 6. So go to where it's 6. Right here. And my domain means it has to be less than 6. So this is not less than 6. This is saying my domain is going to be greater than negative 6. That's out. This doesn't even go to negative 6, so it can't equal negative 6. This says x is going to be greater than 6. So that's my answer right there. Number 18, the value of y is directly proportional to the value of x. When x equals 512, y equals 128. What is the value of y when x equals 64? So if I do y over x, let's say I have 128 over 512. I can set up a proportion here to find this missing value. So, to figure out what I am dividing by, I can do five hundred twelve divided by sixty four, which will give me eight. That means sixty four. I would need to do five hundred twelve divided by eight to get to sixty four. If I divide by eight on the bottom, I got to divide by eight on the top. So one hundred twenty eight divided by eight. I get 16. Number 19. It says, what is the equation in slope-intercept form of a line that passes through the point 5, 0 is parallel and is represented by the to the line represented by y equals 1.2x plus 3.8. So if it's parallel, they have the same slope. So that means my m has to be the same as what it was in the previous equation. So my m has to equal 1.2, and it has to go through the point 5, 0. So I'm going to use point slope form. So I have y minus 0 equals 1.2 x minus 5, and then I need to convert it to slope-intercept form. So I'd have y equals, because y minus 0 is y, 1.2 x, and then I do 1.2 times 5, 1.2 times 5, and I get 6. So y equals 1.2 x minus 6. Last one, number 20. A student graphed f of x 
equals x and g of x equals f of x plus 3 on the same coordinate grid, which statement describes how the graph of f of x and g of x are related. So f of x equals x, g of x equals f of x plus 3. So what I need to do is anywhere I see f of x, I'm going to plug in the equation for f of x. So I'm going to plug in x. So g of x is really just x plus 3. So what is the difference between f of x and g of x? Well, f of x is x, g of x is, f of, is x plus 3. So I've just added 3 here at the end. That means my y-intercept went up by 3. So right here, I have the graph of f is less steep. Well, I didn't touch the steepness. I didn't touch the slope. The graph of f is steeper. Again, I didn't touch the steepness. The graph of f is shifted three units down to create graph of g. Did I go down? No, because I added. The graph of f of x is shifted three units up to create g of x. That is correct. Make sure you have written all your work in order to receive credit for these corrections.